So I've got for sure Ying Hua Yang. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on fire these days. Uh, so you guys, were, we're going to speak to this in the terms of uh, you were previously on Technori. So it's past tense because this sure. show is going to go out after that. Sure. Uh, overall, you know, you guys are a Technori company. You're based in, uh, where are you based technically now? Palo Alto. So you're based in Palo Alto. May I make sure you just keep swinging the mic back and forth? Um, you're based in Palo Alto and you were from the Midwest as far as roots though, correct? Correct. Where, where originally did you guys sort of conceive this company? I guess tell us the, your entrepreneurial background, how you got back to Chicago. Sure. Uh, so the company originally started in Urbana-Champaign, uh, right in the middle of Illinois at the university. Um, and, yeah, we decided to head out to California because we think that's, that's the center of, um, of consumer facing tech products. I, so I would totally agree. I think that California definitely, West Coast definitely has the upper hand in, versus Chicago in the consumer facing products. Um, but I would argue like Chicago's ecosystem, what about it other than the user base? What about it did you think was missing as an entrepreneur that was going to be doing a, a B to C tool? What did you think was missing from the, other than obviously the user base? What, what was missing? Why would you want to go somewhere other than Chicago? I think, I think, the main reason is the reason we just mentioned that we think that California is more for um, consumer-based products um, like us. And um, here is more for enterprise, that kind of product. And that is the main reason. I don't think there's any other s uh, specific reason that we want to shift. Okay. Yep. Um, so that area is also much, much larger when it comes to an international presence. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of people that filter through um, both San Francisco and L.A., um, constantly coming from other countries, flying into the U.S., living there. Um, and it's it's a very large base of all the people from, who speak a lot of different languages. Chicago is as well. I was going to say, all, all of our global global council people would be like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chicago most certainly is as well. Yeah. Um, but it, it's... I get your point, though. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely it's, it's, it's definitely the, the mecca for, for user consumer user experience and things like that. Um, I guess what we haven't talked about yet is essentially what you guys do. And I, I wanted to leave that as a... Uh, the back end of this conversation, mostly because I just think it's so cool and, and represents, uh, as we talked about in our technology prep, it represents, in my opinion, a not a, a just a groundbreaking way of getting rid of that communication and language gap. So, for those who did not attend technology, what is Flipword? Sure. So, at at its most basic level, Flipword is a tool that will replace specific English words while you're browsing the web into words in a language that you're trying to learn. So if you're trying to learn French while you're reading Huffington Post or browsing Amazon or spending time on Facebook, you'll end up seeing a couple of French words right in the middle. And those words are intelligently selected so that you're seeing words specifically at the moment that you need to learn them so that you, one, learn them efficiently, and two, don't forget them over time. And how is the like? how does this fundamentally work? Because I feel like the one... The one area, you know, there's all kinds of different solutions for learning lang languages, but this is unique in that it replaces words. So if I'm, I'm on my website and it replaces words that I'm seeing all the time with a word of the language I'm trying to learn, or maybe it's not even, it just selects different languages. How does this work in my brain? Sure. Um, so for most language learning products that people are really familiar with, whether it's Rosetta Stone or Duolingo, the the problem that, that they have an issue with and the, re the reason that a lot of people can't learn a language is because those apps require you to spend time to go open them. Yep. They require you to sit down and spend 30 minutes or an hour doing this really boring, monotonous tech. I was going to say, because Rosetta Stone is like one of my favorite products because you can buy it and you can set it in the middle of your table and it will collect all of the dust particles that come in through the window. It's spectacular. Thing. And then you can throw it out and use Flipboard. They really need to add that to their website. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's the, the thing that we're doing is is we're taking, we're getting rid of that set, setting aside time and trying to go into some custom context that you're not actually going to use, and putting it into your daily interaction. I mean, that's why you go to another country is because you want to be immersed in a language. You require that to succeed, right? With Flipboard, you're already spending time reading news. You're already spending time browsing the web, and by doing this, you are literally immersing yourself through the day, just a little bit at a time, without fully immersing yourself um, but it's enough that that repetition and that constant usage without thinking about it really embeds it in your head i mean it's it's the easiest way to relate it is is thinking about how a baby learns right babies learn a language 
while they are pooping, while they are, are learning how to walk, yep. right? They, they don't do it by sitting down and deciding to study. There, there's no book that gets put in front of them and says, here's your grammar, like learn, learn this for the day. And you know, I'll add two things to this. And I, I was a huge fan when I saw this. Like, so Ken from Republic is the one who set us up with you guys. And you guys are also launching a crowdfunding campaign as well on Republic. Uh, the Technology Showcase in January was entirely about uh, companies that were crowdfunding. That wasn't the gist of it, but essentially we're introducing to Chicago the ability to invest in companies on our stage, which is cool and novel uh, and not really done anywhere else in the country that I'm aware of. So that's really cool, and thank you guys for being a part of that. But the bigger reason was when he told me about this, I the, the story of me learning Spanish, I'm not going to waste people's time with it, but it's a funny one. Mm-hmm. It required uh, me to go after school to meet with like a neighbor lady who was a Spanish teacher so I could learn Spanish because I refused to learn it in school because I thought it was stupid. And I have no reason to learn another language, which obviously was not forward thinking. And just the whole thing was a pain in the butt. And so I didn't... I. I purposefully did not remember any of it. And even though I got the tutor, I would like remember it for the test. I would just memorize the vocabulary and then I would leave. And I remember nothing. Uh, fast forward to graduate school at Northwestern and I started working on a project we called uh, El Pulso. And the whole gist of it was we were trying to create a media tool for the Spanish community, millennial Spanish community within Chicago. And the gist is, and this is something that will relate to you guys, the younger Hispanic audience does not speak English a hundred percent nor do they speak spanish 100 percent. they speak spanglish they speak a combination of both they can certain to certain degrees they can understand and, and comprehend and read and speak certain levels at each one and so what we did was and i learned spanish relearned spanish as i was creating this product was that if we slip in like abuelo instead of grandfather and we slip in i hope that's the right word <laughs> i'm just oh, gonna yeah. get crushed you, you got it <laughs> yeah so like if you switch some of these certain words out words that the younger generation utilizes regularly just because they've heard it at home. They recognize that, and they can actually read sentences. In fact, they prefer to read sentences that are a mixture of, of the language. But what it ultimately did was, and we learned in our testing, this was not the purpose, but we learned in our testing, was that we were reinforcing both English and Spanish to our readership. Older generations of people who are reading El Pulso that we did not target as a demographic were learning English that they previously had no idea. Mm-hmm. And people who were Spanish who had no basic understanding of their own person, like their own cultural language, but were mostly English speaking, were learning Spanish. And if you think of like the Facebook uh, posts that go out all the time viral when people take out the vowels of words and you can still read the sentences, what you guys are doing is essentially kind of a combination therein of your brain over time memorizes certain patterns. Mm-hmm. And if I switch out words and different things, my brain will intuitively just make those switches for me. And essentially what ends up happening is subconsciously you just learn a new language. And that is what is so brilliant about this is there is no learning curve. There is The learning curve is that you are literate, in fact, right. essentially. No, absolutely. And I think your point is, is spectacular on, on point. You guys um, hiring? <laughs> yeah, we we will not? be very shortly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, another, point we, um, another point we really want to uh, mention is that uh, the problem is the traditional classroom teaching as well as the language app, Duolingo Rosesto. Um, we said like they they force you have to start to learn so that you will be in the learning environment. And uh, we call it they learn in a closed environment because none of the things actually have any relationship. I mean, it has relationship with your life, but you're probably not going to see most of them uh, after you quit the app after you leave the classroom. And um, this is a way... You mean the page in the Spanish book where it said chores and then it would say cortel el césped and it would be like each one of them and then I had to like learn like what the tenses were. You mean that's not applicable to a seventh grader? No, I mean... (laughs) Yeah. So what I mean is like after you close the book, you won't actually go to touch, touch it again. Nor will I mow the lawn. Yeah, so so, <laughs> so that is the problem. But Flipboard is different because we are trying to teach you in a very lower an- anxiety environment because that's where you are most comfortable with. And that's there's no entry point at all. And you just go and you just do whatever you want to do and you begin to learn. And I think that is another point. Um, I, I think it's a great point. And I, I would tell you the same thing that Brian Burkhart from Square Planet, who is our prep coach for all the companies that go on Technori, said to you via the phone, which was, and he he meant it, and I mean it too, you guys better not forget us. And when we're ever looking for sponsorship, you better answer that phone call. Because I seriously believe that this has the potential to be the future of how people learn languages. I honest to God believe 
that you can use this in an, in a you know in a Kindle and put this in your book and learn how to learn a language on the flight to whatever the country you're going to at least enough to not take a cab into a place that you shouldn't be at a certain time. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I think that that's that's what we're working towards is our our goal is not just to be in one place. Our goal is to integrate it throughout your daily life. Um for now that means digital devices. Um, pretty soon we're, we're going to be releasing uh, mobile apps, and we, we loved it to be on Kindles and everywhere else. Uh, so I mean, it, it has to be part of your life. Like that, People who learn successfully integrate it into everything they do. I, I totally agree, and, and obviously I back this. And the reason that you're on Republic more than just the obvious of raising capital is that it is a mission. And the reality is uh, the language barrier between people costs jobs. It costs money on a lot of fronts. It's safety. It's traveling with your family and understand like there's just so many different things. And just, you know, again, just being like a cultured individual to be able to understand multiple languages other than your own, to understand cultures truly in historic tense rather than just like I can, you know, I'm a, I can translate two words. Uh, this is a, you know, a really novel thing. And I think it's got a lot of potential right now for users. Is it just a, a browser like plug in or how does that how does it work? Currently, we're a Chrome extension. And so you install you install that from uh, the web store or through our website, and then uh, you will automatically switch words on any web page you are browsing, as long as you're using Chrome, Google Chrome. I am going to install that on my computer literally as soon as you're done with this. Awesome. I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, very cool. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I did want to touch back on your previous point. I mean, so behind everything that we're doing, we have a mission and a reason behind it, um, and one of the big deals that the things the problems that we see in the world like you mentioned is that language is a massive barrier i mean there, there's currently tons of conflict and tons of issues i mean just the the, the muslim ban that just yep. got instated um all, all of this is is such a, a massive deal um and the, the biggest issue and the, the thing at the core of it is understanding people right the the problems all of these problems are simply that no one understands anyone else um, no matter how much you can see their culture, no matter how much you can you can like try to relate to them, very few people can because people have such broad experiences. Um, and, and, and our mission is to connect that, is to reduce that barrier, is is to make it so that language can be learned almost passively and automatically while you're doing everything. I, my, I mean, my seventh grade self would laugh in my face. I can't even believe I'm saying it, but I'm I'm going to say it. I really do think that. We need to learn as many languages as individuals growing up as you possibly can because I think that we can't possibly understand other people's cultures and backgrounds until we learn their languages enough to be somewhat literate in it because all translations are translated by someone who speaks your language natively and then writes it in like how you will understand. And so it, it doesn't, it's like literally all of the cultural essence is just sucked right out of it the minute it's translated. Right. So one thing that people often don't realize is that culture and language have no separation. Like, culture and is tied directly into a language, and language is tied directly into a well, language. Yeah, go to Tennessee and listen to them talk. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, in, in Japan, you can't say a sentence without having the culture of, of honorifics, of, of saying yeah. where so, if someone's above or below you in, in any social regard. Um, and, and the whole language is built up simultaneously with society. It changes as society changes. And you, you can't separate them. Like, when you're learning a language, you almost have to learn parts of the culture. Otherwise, you're like you said, you're, you're not getting the whole picture. Awesome. Well stated. Where do you go? Uh, where do people go? Your campaign is now live, I believe, on Republic. Where do people go to get involved, to invest, to learn more about your campaign on Republic? It is the uh, mm -hmm. republic.co slash flipboard. Republic.co slash flipboard. And to follow you on social media and things like that, just flip uh, flip flipboard app? Uh, flipboard.co. No, but that on social media. Sure. So on Facebook, it's it's facebook.com slash flipboard. And on Twitter, it's facebook.com slash flipboard app. Okay, Flipboard app on, t on Twitter. Cool. Um, and then lastly, my last little piece for you guys. So right now, as you said, it's a browser. When do you expect people to be able to utilize it and find it in different places? Or is that contingent on how much money you guys raise? So the amount that we raise will definitely change the trajectory. Um, we think that pretty quickly, hopefully within three months, we'll be able to get a couple of additional ones out, or at least one. Um, but for now, Chrome extension, we want to focus and make sure that, that at least one experience is, is spectacular um, to affect as many people as possible. And then it will be a really quick process to get it everywhere. Go to republic.co backslash flipword. Invest, get involved as soon as you can so that I can get something on my Kindle to read books and learn a language because I'm lazy. 
Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. You can stream this episode and more on technory.com, and you can stay up to date with our Technory news feed and other tech bites by following us on Facebook and Twitter at Technory or follow me at Katoon. Boom. That's a wrap. Mm-hmm.